So uh, welcome again to What's in the Meter uh, project research training. Uh, in this session, I'm going to uh, continue with my introduction to qualitative research methods um, and talk about conducting uh, interviews in particular. So um, our learning objectives is to be able to define what is meant by the interview method, uh, the different types of interviews, um, to be able to outline the techniques used in qualitative interviews uh, and how to prepare uh, for fieldwork when conducting interviews. So the interview method is basically a conversation with a purpose. And it's the best choice for us if the researcher wants to um, seek individual perspectives and experiences. And these could be at the personal level or a household level. Uh, and the topic is of a personal or insensitive nature uh, considered mostly private. Uh, it could be uh, private dreams and aspirations or um, you know, private sp sphere matters such as um, uh, routines and practices in the home. Um, these are typically cannot be investigated through surveys uh, is another reason why we would want to use a qualitative approach such as interviews, um, such as complex problems that have changed through time, um, uh, matters that change through a personal biography of a person or um, through um, what has happened to a particular area over the years. And basically, it is a way of gaining in-depth knowledge by asking uh, how and why uh, you know, things are the way uh, they are. Um, and so for, for those, uh, this is when the interview method is, uh, is the best choice. There are different types of interviews uh, for qualitative research. Um, one is considered structured uh, or described as structured or closed type of interview. And typically the questions are closed. Uh, they could be yes, no, or they seek specific information such as how old are you? Uh, did you grow up in this area? Yes, no. Um, and it's a good method for conducting fact finding missions. Uh, typically we do them when we have very little time and we need to go into an area, find as much information as possible in order to implement or uh, design a specific uh, uh, policy tool or even a research tool. And, and they're rarely used in qualitative research uh, when we speak of qualitative research more broadly. And they're very similar to quantitative uh, research in the sense that a survey uh, admitted, uh, self-administered is, is a form of a closed interview. The, the most common type is the semi-structured interview, and it's typically what we uh, refer to when we talk about uh, interview method. Now, in a semi-structured interview, we have the researcher has prepared a number of questions. Um, they are um, context-based, and um, and they um, in the in the interview, um, a certain level of deviations are allowed to happen. Uh, for example, we uh, we can diverse uh, our conversation depending on what uh, our participant or interviewee has said. And uh, it mostly consists of open-ended questions in order to open up the conversation and, and get the person telling us uh, what we need to know. Now, of course, they can also include closed um, cl questions within that, uh, you know, in order to establish specific facts or uh, as a matter, uh, as part of the conversation. And finally, the unstructured open interview. And in this case, we have a very limited number of questions and they're typically very general. Now, this is a, a method often used when we conduct long-term observe, observational or ethnographic type of research when we have plenty of time and we, we, we spend time and live with the, with the community. And these tend to be very open-ended um, and not very clearly defined on purpose in order to get people to talk and, and for them to tell us what they wish to tell us with us without us defining what they uh, what we want them to talk about. Uh, and so they're less common, but more common with more ethnographic long term research projects. Uh, so, yeah, to speak more specifically about semi structured interviews, uh, as I said, um, we still want, even though we have a purpose and it's a, a focused type of discussion, uh, we need it to be open and fluid. Um, so it is guided by our questions. And to, to do that, we have to produce an interview guide, often uh, referred to as an interview framework or an interview schedule. It means the same thing. It's basically a list of questions that the researcher needs to ask uh, the interviewee. And as I said, uh, we have to avoid as much as we can open-ended questions. 
So for example, um, do you live here is not the best way of asking it. Rather, uh, tell me about your life in this place, for example. And uh, we may probe, uh, so for example, um, tell me about what you like about living here and what do you dislike. So even uh, we probe and we open up the question even further to get uh, as much of the meanings and perceptions of our interview as possible. Now the interview guide, in a, because it's semi-structured and not a structured interview, we encourage flexibility. So the idea is that we can uh, uh, diverse, diver, uh, di deviate the expected divergences from the, the guide in order to pursue relevant information uh, that the researcher may have not known about or may not have considered important and then they come up in the discussion. And so um, the semi-structured interview process allows the researcher to kind of go into that uh, particular matter, ask a little bit more, uh, and then maybe after doing that, come back and um, come back to the original list of questions. Uh, the, re reviewer, the researcher may as well uh, rephrase a particular question. So halfway through a conversation, the researcher may realize that the way they are uh, phrasing a question, the words that they are using is creating a confusion. In that case, changing the languages uh, used, uh, rewording a question is encouraged. The order of the questions may also be changed uh, and even some questions may be omitted. For example, they have already been answered uh, in other uh, in an earlier part of the interview or uh, we realize quickly that they are not appropriate for the situation or condition that our interviewee is in. So the interview guide uh, requires that when we produce it, we also um, prepare ourselves uh, for uh, for the fieldwork. Um, so within the guide, for example, we may pre um, have uh, in mind a starter question uh, and an explainer to the uh, to open up the interview. Uh, so we explain to the, our interviewee why is it uh, that we wish to speak to them, uh, why are we here, uh, and we may have some. Uh, opening questions in order to break the ice and get the conversation flowing and establish some level of rapport uh, with our uh, interviewee. And also another important point of preparedness uh, in the interview is to, to pre close the interview. Uh, so these might be um, re reminders about what the research was about, thanking the interview, that's very important, and explaining what's going to happen next. So whether the interviewee is going to be receiving the results of our interview or the results of our research or being updated or fed back what we've done. Importantly, uh, any prompts or probes that you think you might be using uh, in relation to particular questions, uh, it's better to have those prepared already. So these can be checklists that apply to all the questions or they can be specific probes related to that topic covered in a particular interview question. So um, probes can be, uh, so by probing we mean knowing a little bit more and we do that in different ways. So a probe can be a silent way, so you may nod uh, or tilt your head um, in order to uh, question or ask um, a little bit more about a particular topic. So there's a non-verbal way of doing, of probing. Uh, we might echo our interviewee, so we re repeat the last statement that they said and ask them to continue uh, with a little bit more if we want to find more information. So we might encourage them and say, oh, okay, so you said that you, you've not had water delivered to your house for the last three months. T tell me why might that be the case? And, and that's a way of probing. Uh, it could be neutral, so um, nodding and, uh, and using words such as uh-huh and I see and other minimal nonverbal signals in order to um, you know, give the interviewee the impression that we, we want to know more, this is exactly what we are here to find out. It could be direct, so you could say, tell me a little bit more about that, or what do you do in that case, or what have you done when that happened? Um, and typically direct probes are important if we are conducting the interview over the phone uh, or other types of um, uh, remote type interviewing uh, where um, nonverbal might not be possible. Phrased assertion is a type of implying that you already know something about what they are saying and encourage the interviewee to speak up a little bit more about it. So um, if they implicitly allude to a particular topic, they're not quite sure if you're interested in finding out a little bit more. Um, 
giving them the the um the sense that you that you know about it uh, and that you're interested to know their opinion about it uh, is a form of probing uh, that is also very effective particularly in topics that are uh, controversial uh, and often remain un, un, unspoken of and finally the um you know a probe is simply questioning who finding out more essentially asking who where, what, when, and how. Now, we can't ask those in the same tone. There's a, there's a, we have to be careful about um, when we ask so much. So these are, should be uh, re recognized in, in the context within which we are doing the research. And finally saying, uh, you know, you, I think this is referred to as clarifying. Uh, so, uh, you said X, please describe to me what you meant when you said something like that. And this is um, particularly when the interviewee may be um, using, referring to um, issues that are happening that are specific to their area that we might not understand very clearly. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with picking uh, on that and asking for more information in order to find out more. So when, in terms of conducting the interview, uh, what do we have to do? Uh, as I said, we have to establish a good rapport uh, with the community or the household or the person that we want to interview. And this is very important at the opening stages of the interview, though it can be also done before uh, we approach, you know, we sit down for an interview. It could be days before when we've agreed that this person is going to be taking part. And so, um, Conducting yourself positively in a community and uh, building friendly, friendly relationships and acquaintances is key to to um, to be able to achieve a successful um, fieldwork in qualitative research. And uh, research has found that participants will speak freely and honestly if they feel comfortable uh, in the interview situation and not judged. They feel secure about the confidentiality that you are offering in, in terms of um, the discussion and the, what will happen to that information. Uh, typically, um, interviews and all forms of qualitative research are normally confidential, so we, we don't share that with others. Uh, we, we don't share what they tell us with, with um, uh, other members of society. And so um, establishing that very clearly and assuring them um, that you will be following confidentiality is key. And um, making sure that you show the interviewee uh, that, the, uh, that you, the interviewer, is genuinely interested in what they have to say and listen intently to them. So you have to actively listen to what they're saying. And this is also crucial in establishing a form of interaction that is positive and important for a successful interview. So what to avoid when interviewing? Um, avoid asking uh, leading questions in order to influence answers. Now, this is a very unethical thing to do anyway. Uh, we will be covering that in, in future, um, in, the, in this uh, other session, sessions on research ethics. Uh, an example of that is, for example, to say the local authority have failed you on water provision, have they not? And then to try and kind of phrase something and frame it in, in that sort of assumptive uh, manner. Uh, another thing to avoid doing is asking about other people. So, okay, what do your friends think about your new household uh, or home setup? So that is a negative way of kind of, you know, the idea is to explore that person's perceptions, feelings, experience, and uh, and not to uh, take that uh, out of that uh, out of them their control. Moving too quickly from uh, one topic to the other is also something we discourage from um, doing. So you have to avoid that because it, it gives the sense that you're not really listening, that you're there to just go through a number of questions and leave as quick as you can. And that is um, that is an uh, has a negative effect on the interview, interrupting the interviewee. I mean, that's uh, fairly basic. If you interrupt what they're saying to you, you risk losing important information that they would have shared with you otherwise. Uh, interrupting as well because of the power dynamic between the interviewer and the interviewee within a research context an interruption sometimes signals to the interviewee uh, that that what they're saying is not important or not interesting 
And so they, you know, they go silent or they qu go quiet about it. And that's pre uh, precisely what we want to avoid. So it's very important not to interrupt and to listen thoroughly and actively. General tips for a successful interview. Um, know your interview guide well and all the probes that you have prepared. Try and practice that uh, on your own. Uh, go through it as many times as you can. Um, and, you know, there's never enough time to go through your interview. And as you move from one interview to the next, there's nothing wrong with revising some of those questions, improving them as you go along and, and familiarizing yourself as much as you can with your interviews. Um, as I said, rehearsing, especially the opener, um, in, in many cases, um, starting off the interview tends to kind of be a bit clunky. People uh, are not quite sure where to where to begin. Um, and so rehearsing and preparing uh, an opener is a, a great way of uh, avoiding that problem. Be aware of the power dynamics, the power differences between you as the researcher and the research participant. Um, there, you know, you're there in their um, uh, house or in their community. You are the one asking them questions, and so it's um, we should expect to, uh, un, you know, to realize that um, the the relationship is not an equal one. Um, even if we uh, are the ones asking and requesting an interview, and that, and even if we explain to the interviewee that. They are not forced to take part in the research, despite all the, the very idea that you are here to find out information for something scientific or knowledge based uh, generates that sort of unequal power dynamic. So realizing that, being aware of it and trying to minimize its negative impact on the interaction between you and the interviewee is very important. Speak carefully. Uh, make your questions very clear. Avoid any jargon, uh, any technical terms that are difficult to understand. Uh, and be comfortable with silence. Sometimes uh, an interviewee might need a few moments to think about an answer. Uh, they might prefer to, um, you know, uh, think clearly or take their time in answering you. So give that silence uh, time. Uh, don't just uh, jump by rephrasing very quickly or, or um, jumping into a new question. You know, be comfortable with the silence. Give the interviewer time, interviewee time in case they uh, wish to answer. Uh, at their own pace. And uh, again, even though I detailed earlier that we are encouraged to ask who, why, what, and where, uh, we have to be careful with the why questions. So sometimes we can probe too much or um, intrude too much. And so it's about uh, realizing when it is appropriate to ask and, and for how long uh, can we ask for more details. So going over what we have discussed today uh, in this session, uh, what is meant by the interview method uh, and the different types of interviews, um, open, uh, closed interviews, open interviews, and uh, the one mostly used and which we uh, will be using in uh, what's in the meter, the semi-structured interview. Hopefully we've covered those. The different techniques used in qualitative interviews, preparing an interview guide, preparing probes, um, and knowing um, what things to avoid and things that we definitely need to be uh, uh, doing uh, during interviews. And finally, um, um, understanding how we prepare for interviews uh, before we go into a field. Um, how do we uh, in in ensure that an uh, interview situation goes smoothly by having um, you know, successfully um, re re rehearsed and um, and learned a, an opener and a, and a closing and thank you um, message at the end. So these are all important parts of preparing for our interviews. So in the next session, um, my colleague Dr. Jillian Waller will be discussing in more detail qualitative data analysis. And uh, until then, I. Uh, um, that that's all from me, and until then, I wish you the best of luck uh, with your work. Many thanks.